So let's say we have this game object with a box collider on it that is set to trigger. And we want something to happen when the player touches it. We can add a new script to it and we can call it trigger. And in Unity components, we can use on trigger enter and on trigger exit methods to specify what want to happen when something enters or exits it. And you can put some code directly into these methods. There is nothing wrong with that. The only problem is that we'd have to create different trigger scripts for different types of triggers that do different things. And instead of doing that, in this video we'll make sort of like a universal trigger component that can do all sorts of things. And we'll do that with Unity events. It's super easy, all we have to do is to just make two events for on trigger enter and on trigger exit and call them in our methods. Now let's say we have this audio file that we want to play with this sort of like a cinematic hit kind of thing. Maybe you're making like a horror game or something, who knows. To play it you need an audio source and for that we can just drag it into the hierarchy. Normally you wouldn't do that, normally you'd have some sort of global audio manager or something, but in our case this should do. Now we can add a new event handler, drag our game object here and call play method on its audio source. We can also make multiple things happen, for example we can make something appear in front of the player. Because, you know, if we're making a horror game, might as well make a proper jump scare. In this project I happen to have this object with two people in it, that I'm usually using while I'm prototyping environments to make sure that all of the proportions are correct. We can disable them by default by pressing Alt-Shift-A, and then on trigger enter we'll set them back to active. Now there are some problems with all of this. Uh, first of all, we're not checking that whatever touched the trigger is in fact the player. It could be anything, it could be an enemy, it could be like some box that was flying around because of explosions or whatever. To fix that we can make sure that our player has some unique tag, in our case it's player. And in our script we can add a string field for our tag that we want to check for. And if it's not empty, and if the object that triggered our trigger has that tag, then we can go ahead and call the event. And another problem is that it won't be triggered just once. It will be triggered every single time we touch it. An easy way to fix this would be to just give us an option to destroy this object the first time we touch it. And we can do it like this. Now, because we made a trigger component that is kinda universal, we can just copy this trigger object here to make another trigger that does something completely different. For example, we can make a new post-processing volume that will have its own profile that will make the screen go red for whatever reason. And when we touch this trigger here, we'll just enable it. 